The National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Kola Olobodion, says Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State cannot point to any development project he implemented for the benefit of the people. He lamented that Governor Bello uh, had turned Kogi into the most backward state in the country with infrastructural decay, adding that he uses the resources of the people of Kogi State for his benefit. However, the State Commissioner for Information, Kingsley Fawo, while reacting, described the Lobodian statement as reckless and false, undeserving of a response from the government. But he's here with us, uh, joining us live from Kogi State. Thank you very much, Mr. Fawo, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me. So, um, Governor Yahya Bello has been in the news for an upwards of, you know, since the beginning of the year mm -hmm. with his... Um, you know, public public statement of you know trying to run for presidency. He's given us feelers that he wants to run for presidency. He said that the people of his zone deserve, uh, you know, the the a, a, a turn, you know, uh, for the presidency. Um, but let's start with because you know what they say: um, charity begins at home. And there's been. A lot of people who've criticized his mode of governance in the state, and many people have decried, you know, a poor infrastructural development. I know he's your boss and you are here to defend his honor, but how well do you think the governor has done so far? And why, would, why should we as Nigerians even give him an opportunity to run for president? Uh, thank you very much. And um, I also want to thank viewers around the world. Um, the governor has done fantastically in terms of infrastructure development in the state. The state he inherited uh, was, was a state that was, uh, uh, was not having uh, much infrastructure in terms of road, in terms of schools, in terms of hospitals and all that. Uh, but the governor has been able to uh, upscale this and raise it to the level of pride that we have today. Uh, so, uh, so far, I would say he has done so beautifully in ensuring uh, Kogi's infrastructure is improved. Hmm. Kola Lobodino has said that in terms of infrastructure, there's been decay. He didn't even say he has not done anything. He said it's been decaying, in meaning that the ones that had been there have gradually been eroded. He's also said that public funds are being used by the governor for his personal benefit. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I sympathize uh, with uh, Mr. Kola Olobondion. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he's someone uh, that I respect personally. I sympathize with him. Uh, he's doing a very tough job. Uh, it is very tough. There are two jobs that are very tough. One, it is tough to defend someone who is not doing well. Secondly, it is tough to discredit someone who is doing so well. Uh, in this case, we are going to deal with the latter. He's struggling to discredit a governor that has done so well. Kola uh, is from Kaba Town in Kogi State. As we speak, the entire road network in Kaba Town is undergoing massive reconstruction. You can send your reporter uh, to go to Kaba and see the beautiful road that we have given to the people of Kaba. They are very happy with this administration. They have been commending the governor. They have been condemning what uh, Mr. Kola Ologondion said about uh, government. So that's why I said I really sympathize with him. You cannot say that the governor has not done anything when he's currently changing the face of your own very town. So it's a very difficult one. And I we sympathize uh, with him. I see. I'm curious to know. I'm sure that Cabo is a very beautiful place, which I have read about. Uh, is road infrastructure or a new fa or a facelift for the roads in Kaba, the most important thing you think the people of Kaba need? Kaba is one of the very most important towns in Nigeria from the days of the Kaba province. Uh, it is the only provincial headquarter that is not a state capital today. Yes, we uh, know so this, is, but what do you uh, think that the people of Kaba a, really is, need right now? No, no, let, is let, it a road? Let, let, me come, let me come to that. Kaba is a place that is um, a fast growing as a commercial, a commercial center, a place that is known for agricultural activities, a place that a couple of industries are springing up, 
a place that um, uh, 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 an agricultural. I'm sure that if we uh, want to know about the history of Kaba, we'll what read about to, it. What I want to what I want you to know is that without good road network, it is going to be very difficult for a place to be commercially viable. So that is why we need to pull that infrastructure there so that we can raise Kaba to the level of her counterparts across the country as a town that is ready for economic boom. Okay. Um, the NUJ at some point uh, had come to the governor to ask for him to rehabilitate the bad roads in the state capital, which is Lokoja. Um, as we speak, and I have spoken to a couple of people, that there are still terrible roads in Lokoja, which is the capital. And you're telling me about Kaba, which is amazing. Um, but what is the situation of the state of roads in Lokoja as we speak? The story in Nigeria is usually for state governors to concentrate all the resources at the state capital to ensure that the state capital looks beautiful. You come to the state capital and say, oh, wow, this government is doing a lot, a lot of um, uh, uh, things. But, you know, in our own situation, we understand the point of developing the rural areas. And that is why we have concentrated the resources of the Kogi people in developing areas that are not uh, in the state capital. As we speak, we have come back to the state capital and there is massive uh, reconstruction of the road network uh, in the state capital. Most of the road that Kogi State is condemned uh, of not fixing are basically federal roads uh, across the state. But we know that the federal government does not use the roads in Kogi State. Our people use those roads. So that's why uh, we have come back to the state capital now to do what we have done in various places across the state in Omala local government, in Oakfu local government, in Olama Boro local government, in Yagba East local government, in, you know, virtually uh, across the state. So we have come back to the state capital now to be able to attend uh, to the roads at the state capital. We are not going to dance to the tune of just uh, concentrating on uh, roads or infrastructure development at the state capital. The people at the rural areas gave uh, the massive support that brought the governor in the first term and the second term. And we cannot forget them and concentrate on the state capital. So we've concentrated on those areas. We are doing a lot in those rural areas. In Kogi East, for instance, we have over 240 communities that are not connected to the national grid. We embarked on a massive and an ambitious project to ensure that we connect them to the national grid. We call it Operation uh, Light Up Kogi East. And as we speak, that project is about 95% completed. These are the things that are taking our resources, things that have direct bearing on that man in the village of Iluke, Akutupa, eh, Abejukolo, eh, Okene, and all those places. So that is what we are concentrating on. Interesting. Um, I, I want to understand why the issue of salary payments is still lingering. It's something we heard last year. We're still hearing it this year. What is the challenge? And, and for a state like Kogi State that's not known for um, like the food basket or as big as, you know, Lagos, what exactly is the source of revenue apart from going cap in hand to the federal government at the end of every month to get your allocation? What is the government doing to grow a certain industry that can fund the state other than going cap in hand at the end of the month? I think you are mistaking Kogi for some states that have not been able to pay salary to uh, their workers. I'm not As mistaken. Speak, uh, Kogi, Kogi is not owing a single month salary. We pay salary regularly and you can uh, confirm from the civil servants who are the direct beneficiaries of this so the issue of salary is not an issue uh, in kogi state and uh, under this administration we have been able to grow the economy uh, uh, to a very uh, to a place that should be respected by all nigerians and uh, you know one of the first thing you need to do is to fix your security and today kogi is one of the most secure states we came from one of the most insecure states, the kidnap capital, the androbic capital, the bank attack capital of, of the country, to becoming one of the safest states in the country. And that is why you see many of these uh, uh, A-list uh, industries are springing up in Kogi State. One of them is Unicane. That is, uh, with Unicane, a, a lot of our people uh, have been employed. Uh, you have uh, all the kind of companies in Ajakuta, in Obajano, in uh, 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 Kotonkarufi, all over the places. They are springing up because 
we have created an environment that enables businesses to grow and thrive. And that is why uh, Kogi is serving all of these uh, industries. So uh, we, we don't have the problem of salary. We are growing our economy. Our internally generated revenue is rising every month. We inherited 350 is, million era when what we is, came in. What is, what is, the, what is your, today what is to your idea at the moment? On monthly basis. What is your idea at the moment as compared to what you had before? Can you give me a number, a figure? Because when you we just came told in, me that the idea three, is growing. When we came in, it was 350 million era. Today, we are close to 3 billion. I, I may not be able to say exactly, but we are You're over certain that if I went to, if I, if I went with, uh, via the FOI to your board of internal revenue, I will get 3 billion plus. You will get, you will, no, 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 I, I didn't say 3 billion plus. I said we are close to 3 close billion Close to 3 today. billion. Yeah. At a point, we were going even beyond 3 billion uh, before we came with um, the, the we, before the issue of pandemic came in and it affected the economies around us, not necessarily uh, our own state, but when the economies around you suffer, then it will have some uh, negative effect on your own economy. So that is, uh, that, that is why we have not been able to cross that three billion uh, line. But we hope to grow the economy uh, of the state uh, to the point that we're able to generate enough revenue to be able to develop the state. We okay. have moved, we have moved positively away from what it used to be in the past. Talking about that the pandemic. down to Talking about the leadership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about the pandemic, let's go back to the beginning of the pandemic. Your governor seemed to not have believed that there was anything like COVID, uh, which also had, you know, you made you had some brush with the NCDC and, of course, um, other people, governments and leaders of thought. Um, what made your gov governor say that there was no such thing as COVID in your state? We did not suffer COVID attack in Kogi state. And we did not even, um, we did not believe that it was something that uh, the, the nation or the world should devote all the attention, all the resources uh, to, to attack. Why? It is something that should have been a handshake between common sense uh, and science. Uh, so you, in, you do not believe case, that COVID case, is deadly in enough case, to, to make the whole world case, worried? We allowed, in our case, we allowed the politicians uh, to dictate to the scientists. And they foisted on us a situation where... I'm sorry, I'm uh, sorry, I'm we sorry, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, come back. Did you say that we allowed politicians to dictate to the scientists? Yes, we I don't, allowed politicians I don't remember, to dictate I don't remember our politicians being the ones who told us that there was COVID, the scientists are the ones who knew what COVID was and mm -hmm. how an epidemic works or a pandemic. If they, if they, so at what, point, at what point did politicians start dictating? Because if you're talking now that, if you're saying that politicians were dictating, then it means that your governor falls in that category. And he was telling scientists that there was no COVID as opposed to the fact that we were dealing with a pandemic worldwide, but your governor chose to pay a blind eye to it and made people who probably were having that particular pandemic or the virus think that there was no such thing and then it spread more and more. Uh, well, you, you, you say it, it spread, uh, but as far as we are concerned in our states, we did not witness that. And uh, Did you I try testing? We, we would be, did you try we testing? Because you, you tested, can't say that we there is no we such thing of, if you are not testing. We were one of, we were one of the first states that brought in test kits. We allow our people to go and do tests. Uh, there are criteria that were set uh, by the uh, N N N NCDC, and they told us that when you go through all those things, you have to subject yourself to tests. We, we allowed our people to go for tests. We set up isolation centers. We set up test centers for people to test. How do you, how what, do, you do all of those things if you don't what, believe that there what, is a pandemic? What, no, the issue is this. When you say there is a pandemic, if you are not conducting tests, how will you prove that the, can, that the pandemic was a mere, uh, a mere um, uh, con, 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 uh, concoction of politicians who wanted to drag it down the throat of scientists that it is something that is going to kill the world? Are we still saying the same thing today? Are we still witnessing the same thing today? There is an Olympic Games that is going on. Are we seeing that there? 
all so the you, so you're that telling are going me that you still board, don't believe and we've seen that they I'm are, sorry honorable thousands. commissioner uh, so honorable it, commissioner it are you telling that, me it means that uh, hold on they, it means are you that, telling uh, me that there is <laughs> that you still do not believe that there is a pandemic that whatever you're doing now is because you just want to fulfill righteousness is that what you're telling me because you're pointing to the fact that there is, is to, Olympics uh, an Olympic holding in justice. Japan. It is to prove that there is no pandemic. It is not only the politicians. Really? The media contributed very largely to it. We know that this is an attempt to ruin the economy of the world. All right. To ruin the economy of Nigeria. I, I'm, not gonna let you, I'm not going to let you. And, and, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, Mr. Pamo. I'm not going to let you on national TV spew ignorance. So I'm going to ask you this question. Have you taken your COVID vaccine? Okay, let, let me... Let me oh, it's a yes or no question. No, no, no. It's a yes or no. It's a yes or no question. Have you taken... No, no, it's simple. You cannot, have you or have you not? Disgusting. And your reasons it's are best known to you. Have you taken... Have you taken the vaccine or not? Have you been vaccinated or not? Have you been vaccinated or not? So, that is the situation. It's your choice. It's your choice. So, I'm going to ask the question one last time. Are you vaccinated, honorable and commissioner? On national television is very disrespectful. I'm sorry. And it shouldn't I'm sorry. have come from you. I'm sorry. Ha have you been vaccinated? Do you think you should be vaccinated? Is it important for you to get vaccinated or not? Is if you... and when I have it, I'll be vaccinated. What, what do you mean by if and when you have it? it? The vaccine was, the first and second phase was state uh, nationwide. Why do I need vaccination when I am not under any threat of COVID-19? Have you traveled out of Kogi State lately? I travel out of Kogi State all the time. As I talk to you, I'm not even in Kogi State. And you don't think that you, the virus can be a threat to you as a person? It's not a threat to me. It's not a threat to anyone. And, and, and so you would not tell the people, in, because you're the information commissioner, and this is information that you're giving to me, that you do not believe in the virus, and so you don't think that people should protect themselves against it, because you don't think it we exists. Have, we have the vaccines in Kogi State. We're a very democratic government. As a Kogite, if you think that you need a COVID-19 vaccine, you walk into our centers and take the vaccine. We have the vaccines in the state. So huh. we are not forcing it on anyone. And we will not, we will not force anyone to take it, and we will not stop anyone who wants or wish to take it from taking it. Well, thank you very much. Kingsley Fanwo is the Honorable Commissioner for Information, Kogi State, and he's been our guest. Thank you very much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, I will give you my take. It's time for my take. It's interesting that we're always pointing fingers to our governors, our leaders, politicians, when things are not going the way we want them to. And we're very quick to court the Constitution or say, well, this is our right. But it's also your right to go out and vote. It's your voice. It's your power. And when you do not vote, here's what happens. Someone is there waiting to press. Yeah, you know, just keep thumb printing and filling the ballot box. Look at what happened over the past two weeks. These people that we call our leaders were given a mandate to allow for electronic transmission of votes. And of course, we need this e-voting system so that we can, you know, one way or the other, get beyond the bottlenecks and all of the drama and, and cut out the issue of, you know, vote buying or, um, you know, taking advantage of the fact that people didn't show up and you know, electoral, electoral malpractices. This is what we wanted that particular thing to do for us. But our politicians, some parts of them decided that they were going to vote against it. We're still waiting for the House of Representatives to see if they could overturn it. But we cannot keep waiting for our, our politicians to do right by us. We also need to do right by ourselves. Do you have a voter's card? Have you ever registered to be voted? Are you 18 plus? I, I don't care if I have to do this every day. Go and get a voter's card. It's now made easy. You can go online and register. Get your voter's card. And when it's election day, go out and vote for whoever you want. Because if you also do not vote, you have also made a choice. You have decided that whatever they do, whether they do it in your favor or not because you did not vote, it still affects you. You're complaining today that you cannot afford egg. 
you're complaining about the cost of living rising high and your salary is not being increased, what are you going to do about it? You can't just go on social media, cry and grumble and tweet. It doesn't change anything. Protests are not enough. You need to vote. You need to come out and vote. I know that we're tired of our politicians and things are not going the way we want it, but we need to also make an impact of sorts. Start educating yourself. Start educating your family members. Let them know the importance of voting. Don't say, oh, whether we vote or not, they know who they will choose. Well, if you know that they know who they will choose, then become members of those political parties. So you also have a right to choose from when whoever is being foisted on the party. That way you know that we push for this guy. And then when we're voting, we're voting for this guy. Don't sit at home and just say, eh, hey, it's their Nigeria. They can do what they like. Your vote is your power. I'm Mary Anna Cohn, thanking you for watching.